series on Windows Server 2012 storage technologies. In this session we're going to be talking about Windows offloaded data transfer. This is referred to as ODX and this technology addresses a common scenario in Windows environments. We transfer a great deal of data. We invariably read and write that data as we replicate it be it for a SQL Server backup environment or if we're deploying virtual machine templates. These are just file system objects and we're reading them from one host to potentially copy to a secondary host and then write them back down. So that generates lots of additional read and write activity over fiber channel controllers or FCOE or iSCSI, um, but it also congests network connectivity. So if we're transferring between servers, we are now congesting networks um, with all of this data. So the goal is to offload that activity to the storage array, thereby alleviating all of those requirements where we're reading the data and then we're transferring them across. We simply take a representation of data and we send that to a receiving site and then the host internally moves the data that represents the blocks for that file. Um, Windows is clearly involved and it takes care of metadata information, that being the NTFS volumes. You know, an object has just been created, the data was transferred by the array, but we have to see the file system object as well. Again, it alleviates all of that congestion over the network um, and all of our connectivity links to the backend storage. Um, and ultimately it leads to just higher efficiencies. I mean, we'll, we'll do a little bit about speed as well, but really this is just about optimizing those environments and making sure that we don't congest networks where we don't have to. So uh, support for offloaded data transfer or ODX is a Windows Server 2012 feature. Um, it's automatically detected against storage devices that are presented to hosts. Um, there's a new inquiry that is generated by a Windows Server 2012 host against the LUNs and it can tell whether the LUN itself is ODX capable. Um, typically, if you have code that is prior to the specification of this, um, then then we need to upgrade the microcode on them. And so for our product lines within EMC, um, we need specific releases. For VMAX, this requires Ingenuity 5876 and the Q1 2013 service release or later. Um, so, so the current versions of 5876 code um, would be appropriate. For VNX, that was implemented in a block operating environment um, called EnyoMR1. Uh, there may be subsequent releases to that, but that is the version where it was introduced. Specifically for VNX, there is a requirement to have an ODX enabler uh, installed. So that's a, a license file that gets imported into the system. So just upgrading to Enyo MR1 doesn't necessarily mean that ODX will be enabled. You must have the ODX enabler installed on the array as well. Effectively, at that point, once you've met all of the requirements and Windows has detected that ODX is capable across LUNs, then anything that will generate a request against the copy API in Windows Server will generate ODX operations. So let's go on and have a look at a demonstration of that. Here we're looking at the desktop of a Windows Server node in a cluster. A number of CSVs have been created, CSV01 through 06, the shared storage devices. Um, we also have Performance Monitor to look at the I.O., so the counters there for read and write activity in total that we're generating to all of the storage devices, just so that we can see what's happening. On CSV01 in a source directory, I have a 600 gigabyte data file. If we copy that, so this, now we're going to use the copy API and we paste it, we begin an ODX transfer um, and now all of the work is being done behind the scenes by the array. And in this particular instance using a VMAX storage array, we're getting in, in excess of 25 gigabytes per second. So a huge performance boost in this particular instance. Uh, if we look at our storage counters, we'll see that we didn't 
actually generate a great deal of read and write activity. Um, there is some transfers that occur. This is um, ODX token information. We're just checking where the status is, but by and large, not a great deal of data transfer. This system can actually sustain quite a bit more IO. So we start one transfer again to a different location and a second one. Now in combination, it's kind of interesting to see ODX um, share resources across the two copy operations. Um, but the aggregate here we see is close uh, in some cases exceeding uh, 30 gigabytes a second. So a huge amount of potential capacity within the system. Um, these will obviously proceed um, and when the first one terminates you'll start to see that the second one starts to increase because now it's able to draw more resources from the system. And here we go, so upwards to our maximum threshold. Again, looking at the counters, uh, we didn't do a great deal of uh, disk activity, a little bit longer than the last one because they were running in parallel. Um, processor time is also alleviated. So this was for a local environment, but what happens if we do it across systems and over SMB3? So now we have two servers, a source and a destination server. In this instance, we're looking at the destination's desktop, so um, it's local to us. Have a number of devices, um, two of interest. There's a backup ODX and a backup no ODX. The difference is one supports ODX, the other one does not. So on our remote system, you can see that this is a remote share. If I copy a file, this happens to be a SQL database backup, to a non-ODX capable device, so we're not able to transfer this workload within the array, then we fall to network speeds. And in this case, I have a gigabit ethernet network, so around 113 megabytes per second. It would take an inordinate amount of time. Same file, now copied to an ODX capable device. So the source and the target are on the same array, and now we're back to our 25 gigabytes per second. So compared with the tens of minutes that it would take to transfer this, we're done in a matter of seconds. If I was a DBA and what I was looking to do was set up a target for a log shipping environment, and as an example, then that process is complete and I can proceed with the next step. So it improves the overall performance of the environment from the business perspective. That ends our session on ODX capabilities. We hope you found it informative and look forward to seeing you next time.